This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll Everybody knows that the Yida Kadosh, the Holy Jew, was one of the closest Hasidim of the seer of Lublin. Now the Lubliner, he wasn't rich, but he was a great Rebbe. And so he lived like a mensch, but the Yida Kadosh was very poor. And he was dependent on his father-in-law, a humble baker, who worked hard all week to feed him and his family. As you'll remember from last week's episode, one Friday afternoon, the Yiddah Kadosh comes to see his Rebbe, the seer of Lublin, wearing his only shirt, which was torn, dirty, and really needed to be washed. And you know, for a Talmud Chacham, for a Jewish scholar, to walk around with dirty clothes is really a chilul Hashem, a desecration of God's name. And so, when the seer of Lublin saw the Yiddah Kadosh looking so poorly, he had compassion on him. Listen, my friend, the seer of Lublin said, I can't let you going into Shabbos looking like this. And so the seer Lublin went into his drawer and brought out a beautiful, clean, pressed, white shirt and gave it to the Yiddah Kadosh. In the Jewish tradition, the garment and the soul are one. And the seer Lublin, who was able to see from one end of the world to the other, from one lifetime to another, and knew everything that you'd done in your life and everything you would do, would never have given one of his shirts to another person unless he knew that that person was very holy. So for the Yid HaKadosh to receive this gift from his Rebbe was the greatest honor in the world. But the Yid HaKadosh was filled with so much humility. He thought the Seer Levin just gave him a shirt because he needed one. And he didn't even understand what he was receiving. Now in those days, every poor person in town went to the mikveh late Friday afternoon to take a bath and clean off some of the dirt from the week. So the Yid HaKadosh, he thanked his teacher for the shirt and he went off to the mikveh to take a bath. And on his way, he ran into Chatzkele, the shikr, the drunkard. And the Yiddish Kadosh immediately noticed that Chatzkele's shirt was even more torn and dirty than his own. And the Yiddish Kadosh, he thought to himself, You know, my Rebbe, the Seer Leblin, he taught me how important it is to have a beautiful white shirt for Shabbos. And Chatzkele, I want him to look good for Shabbos. So impulsively, he takes the shirt and he gives it to the drunkard and he says, Here, Chatzkele, you want a good shirt? I just got this from the Tzir Lublin. He gave it to me for Shabbos, and I'm giving it to you for Shabbos. Now, there are those who drink for themselves and those who drink for the whole town, and there are super drunkards who drink for all the Jews of the world since Avram Avinu and Chatzkele. Although he wasn't a super drunkard, he certainly drank for all of Lublin. And since his mind was only on drinking, Chatzkele didn't really care about Shabbos. And when the Yid Kadosh gave him the Tzir Lublin shirt, he ran straight to the tavern. And he said to the people hanging around there, Who's going to give me the most money for the shirt of the seer Lublin? And everybody looks around and they said, You have the real thing? He said, Yeah, I got it from the Yid Kadosh. So people start putting in bids. And the price gets higher and higher until finally the bartender calls out and he says, Chatzkele, I'll give you free drinks for the whole year. So Chatzkele gives him the shirt. He thinks he got the best deal you could possibly get. I mean, free drinks for a whole year. But Chatzkele, he underestimated the bartender. On Monday morning, the bartender, he went to the marketplace and he stood on a chair and he shouted for everyone to hear, I have in my hand here the very shirt of the seer of Lublin. This shirt can give you any miracle, anything you need. Women who don't have children, as soon as their husbands put on this shirt, will conceive. Women having difficulty in pregnancy will give birth even before the full nine months to a healthy baby. And he goes on and on. Whoever needs Parnassa, whoever needs health, whoever needs anything, as soon as they put on the shirt, it will come to them immediately. Within 20 minutes, he sold the shirt for 10,000 rubles, which was an absolute fortune at the time. Word got back to the Holy Lubliner, the seer of Lublin. And I don't want to say anything bad, but he was really angry that his gift to the Yid Kadosh had turned into this low commercial deal that was being sold in the marketplace for 10,000 rubles. But more than feeling angry, the Seer Lublin was hurt that the Yiddish Kadosh, his closest student, would think so little of himself. 
Eventually, word got back to the Yid Kadosh that his Rebbe, the Seer Lodwin, was angry. The Yid Kadosh he felt so bad. He realized what a mistake he had made. He thought he was doing a favor for a fellow Jew and that he had actually placed a barrier between himself and his Rebbe because he didn't understand the true intention of the gift. And so for the first time in his life, the Yid Kadosh began to doubt everything he'd ever done. He was totally ashamed of himself and he ran outside of town. But where was he going to go without his Rebbe? He sat down on a rock by the side of the road and started crying. And everybody knows that when a worthy person is truly broken, and the Aon Avi, Elijah the prophet, comes to help that Jew out. Because when a Jew is broken, they don't just want a pat on the back. They want real answers. And in this case, Eliyahu Anavi didn't appear to the Yiddish Kadosh like the chief rabbi of some city. He came like a drunkard, stumbling his way down the street. And he sat down, actually fell down, next to the Yid of Kadosh. He puts his arm around the Yid of Kadosh's shoulder. And he says, hey, brother, what's the problem? Why are you crying? The Yid of Kadosh tells the whole story of the shirt. And he says, for the first time in my life, it seems that all the good things I've ever done I didn't do them in an honest way. I'm just a big fake. I'm a big liar. And the drunkard, who's actually Eli Aonavi, he says, hey man, never regret when you do something good and it comes from your heart. You gave the shirt of the Seer Lublin to Chatzkele the drunkard because you really wanted to help him. And you know what? What do we know? Maybe one day he might be able to pay you back. When the Yiddish Kedush looked over at this drunkard, Eli Aonavi said, I'm going to tell you a story. Take my friends, Avram and Zev. They were neighbors over a century ago. Zevi was a thief. He was such a professional thief that he could clean out your pockets, your purses, your entire house, while he was standing there in front of you without even being caught. And the townspeople of Lublin, they slowly became poorer and poorer as Zev the thief became richer and richer. Eventually, Zev made so much money that it was beneath him to steal, because now he was a wealthy man. So he retired, and he bought himself a beautiful mansion, and he enjoyed his retirement. The only problem with his retirement plan is that when a thief stops stealing, there's no more money coming in. So Zev soon spent all of his money, and he had nothing left, and like any poor beggar, he went to the community to ask for some financial relief. The committee and the community look at him and they say, please, you stole all the money in this town, and you're asking us now that we should give you tzedakah? Give back all the money you stole, and then we'll give you some tzedakah. So they weren't going to help out Zev. And Zevi didn't know what to do. He didn't want to steal anymore, but he didn't know how to do anything else. That's the only way he knew how to support himself. So slowly, he started running out of food, and he was starving. One Friday, Avram, Zev's wealthy neighbor, was walking home from the mikvah, and he sees the ex-retired thief sitting on the porch of his villa, looking completely broken and depressed. He said to himself, no matter what my neighbor did in the past, I'm not going to let him starve on Shabbos. So he ran back home to his wife and he said, we have to prepare food for our neighbor Zev and his family. Yeah, it's true, he was a thief and he stole this money, but still he needs to eat. And so they prepare enough food for all three meals of Shabbos. And his wife, being a very good woman, she not only prepared food for Shabbos, but even enough food to last him the whole week. And in this way, Zev the thief was able to get by. It became a ritual. Every Friday, Avram, the rich man, would send two packages to his neighbor, one for Shabbos and one for the rest of the week. And three years later, on the very same day, at the same moment, Avram, the rich man, and Zev the thief passed away. There were two funeral processions that were held exactly at the same time. And the whole city turned out to honor Avram, the rich man. But his neighbor, the thief... Only a few stray thieves who remembered the good old times walked behind his coffin. Both Avram the rich man and Zev the thief, they went up to heaven. And the rich man went before the heavenly court first. And everybody knows that in heaven, one is judged before an immense scale. One side of the scale is for the good things that the person did. The other side for, let's call it, the mistakes they made. So the angel Michael, he comes with his briefcase and he pulls out a few of the good deeds that Avram did and he puts them personally on the scale. It took a second. The scale barely moved. Then the Satan came in, and he brings ten wagon loads full of bad deeds and dumps them on the other side of the scale. Avram started to sweat. He saw that his good deeds had almost no weight at all. What? He said to himself. 
he wasn't going to have a place in paradise. He wasn't going to Gan Eden. Avram was so scared, he closed his eyes so that he wouldn't see the heavenly judges push a button and make him fall like a barbecue into Gainom, into hell. But then suddenly he hears magnificent trumpets. And angels cry out in unison, Avram the rich man is to enter Gan Eden. Avram opens his eyes. He said, what? What's this? What's going on? It must be a mistake. Something's wrong with the scale. It was now tilted the other way. And his few good deeds outweighed the bad. What's going on here? What happened to all my sins? He said. The angels started laughing. The sins. The second you closed your eyes, your friend, Zev the thief, he crept up behind you and stole them all. So now Eliyahu and Vi is speaking to the Yid Kadosh. He says, you see, my friend, sometimes you don't know how a favor might be repaid. You gave Chatzkele the shirt from a place of truth and sincerity because you really wanted to help him. Just like my friends, Avram and Zev, maybe one day he'll come and help you. Whatever you do, don't stop helping your fellow Jews because they need you just as much as you need them. I lie, lie, lie. Thank you so much for listening to these stories. If you know somebody who still hasn't heard of the Hasidic Story Project, you know what they're missing out on. Please make sure to share a link with them, either from the website, HasidicStory.com, or from wherever you subscribe to your podcasts. And of course, make sure to leave us a review and five stars. It makes a big difference in the charts and more people will see the podcast and be able to listen to it. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to sharing our next story together.